Hey, it's David. Let's move on from the seat and let's start on the back lights. Right, I think we've all had enough of the seat for the time being. Certainly I have. Not that I haven't enjoyed it. It's been a good exercise, uh, improving my fabrication skills, improving the way I visualize things. But it's time to move on. Um, there's some tweaks to happen to the seat. I've test ridden the bike. Um, I know what I need to do to adjust it. It's a little bit unusual to ride if you've never ridden this sort of spring seat before, but quickly get used to it. But now let's move on. So the first thing you'll notice is the mud guards off. What I originally envisaged was maybe being able to leave things like the indicators and the rear lights on and mount the rear mud guard on and off as I wanted it. That might be the case, it might work out like that. But I think for now, I'm gonna keep them two independent systems so that uh, when I put the rear mud guard on, it uses the stock indicators and rear lights. Well, maybe not the stock rear indicators, we'll figure something out for that. But uh, so these rear lights come off and replaced by the stock, all on that single cable, so plug and play. To do that though, if I've not got the rear mud guard on, I don't need the rear foot pegs. Those need to come off anyway as part of the swap between Solo and Pillion. And if I'm taking them off, that's where the indicators can go. And I've quickly mocked up a bracket to hold my choice of indicators. And when I say quickly, it's just a piece of steel with three holes in it. Nothing complicated at all. But it's pretty much what it's going to be in real life, I think. Uh, that, I think, is where I'm happy with the indicators being. So that will just get remade in a slightly thicker piece of steel, the edges rounded off and so forth, and that will be done. Now, I do have to modify the indicator a little bit um, because, as you'll notice, the threaded part is sticking quite a long way through here. But I want to shorten it anyway because visually it's just not very attractive. Um, but that requires some modification of the indicator, which by the way, I'm quite sure would void any warranty But um, there we go. It's just part of being custom now This indicator is the one I've used before I've had it on the Sportster for years and it's the Motone uh, Bullet indicators. I like them. They're really well made nice alloy case where the front uns does unscrew and it's got a waterproof seal in there So, you say a really nice fine thread, does a great job. And because I like this so much, I'm actually going with the rear light from Motone as well. What I've chosen is this, because I think it really suits the era that I'm going for. It's LED unlike this which is bulb well I'm quite happy with bulb indicators to be perfectly honest um, but this is LED now where to mount well the obvious place would just be to stick it here um, and that would work really well except I'm not going to do that as I think you probably would have guessed um, the, again the easiest thing would be just to stick it on the back of the saddle and that's certainly an option um, but there is okay the saddle will move up and down a bit because it's on a spring but I don't think it would move up and down or twist enough to significantly change how visible that would be and actually I think that would be, if I was going with a single uh, mount for that that would be where it, it would go I think I'm quite happy with it there but it's not. It's going to go here and there's going to be two. So it's going to be one each side. Um, again, that's a bit of a classic Harley thing. I'm not quite sure when Harley started doing it, probably later than the 50s, but it's certainly a, a, an old Harley thing to have the two rear lights. And I, I think it looks, in my opinion, best around here. I do have to allow room for a rear plate somewhere. I haven't made my mind up where that's gonna go. Um, there's only two real places for it. 
but um, well maybe if I'm using this configuration maybe I've got a op third option but we'll see so for now that's where that's going to go my issue is how do I mount it let's get the indicators in place let's make up some brackets get them in get these on and then we can look at wiring them up so with my uh, template let's just mark off a couple of sections get those cut off and drilled out oh, yeah and uh, in case you're wondering yes I really did drill out the wrong of the three holes out to uh, 10 mil first so must remember these are both eight and that is a ten Now the holes are drilled, all that remains to do with this is to actually shape the brackets. Let's just do a test fit. So that's just fine. I'll then need to shorten that indicator bolt down. So first things first, Let's do a bit of tidying up on these so that uh, then we can turn our attention to these. Now this is just a rough shaping as with the rest of the, the actual build. All the detail, final sanding off and shaping will be done before paint. So I bolted the, uh, just hand type the bracket in place here. So this bracket needs finishing. There's no point doing too much work on a bracket like this until you're actually sure this is gonna be the final product. I mean, what if I decided that I actually wanted to tie this in to a mount for the rear light, for example, or I'm gonna to need to modify it because I'm gonna put the, uh, I'm gonna bolt the number plate bracket back to here. No point wasting time with fine details until the bike is actually prepped and ready and you know it's as you want it. Now, as I say, this is, is too long, but let's feed it through and see what we've got to work with. It's gonna be rare you're gonna have an application that actually uses this much thread, in my opinion. It's there because sometimes you need it, but when you don't need it, this is either in the way or it's ugly or it's both and what you can't do is just well you can if you're really careful um, is just to take a hacksaw to this and to carefully cut your way through but in my experience nine times out of ten you're more likely to come through and cut this this protective sheathing or even through the cables themselves so I prefer not to do it that way so I'm just going to use this for measuring purposes
Oh, now I've got a problem. I might actually need to remake this bracket. Although I could get this slim nut in, I can't get this uh, fatter flange nut in there. Let's see if I've got a different nut. So, as I was saying, this is why you don't make, you don't put too much work into finishing your brackets until you've finally tested them in place. This shows me how much thread I can afford to leave. Now I'm still going to leave some as a lead in and because it'll give me somewhere to attach the shrink wrap to if I want to seal the end of the thread off. But even allowing for another washer in there, that should be fine. To cut this down, we need to remove this because otherwise there's a very high chance with personal experience of cutting through them. If you're really careful, yeah, maybe you don't need to, but... Okay, so careful not to lose a screw. So this leaves us this really nice aluminium machined body here. I don't know whether it's billet or not, it certainly has been machined out. So yeah, really nice. Now to remove, we're going to follow the usual process of uh, spinning a couple of nuts on. Okay, so chop down, filed off, quick deburr, blow out, and we can reassemble. Now again, remember steel thread into alloy, so don't overcook it, because it will strip. Now, there's a rubber seal down in here which keeps the whole thing nice and waterproof from the front. But obviously we do have a point of water entry in here, so uh, I do like to seal these up. But that's now ready for fitting to the bike. Electrics will have to come a little bit later. In case you're wondering why I said electrics will have to come a bit later, it's because I want to wire the whole plug-in, rear lights, indicators, into that uh, single plug, all in one go. I have every confidence that the individual units will all work, they're all brand new. I haven't tested them, but uh, if I should prove wrong, and there is an issue, so it won't be much to uh, fault find. Tuck the wires out the way for the moment, somewhere safe. Now, what I have to do is do the other side, but with having done it once, the second side is always easier. Both indicators are now installed on the bike, Widening, wiring. Needs tidying up correct hardware, uh, nuts and stuff. This needs to be rooted, connected, because they're still just floating around here at the moment. But that's where they're going to be. Um, I need to decide on routing and, and so forth, and uh, tidying up and hiding so that stuff is not quite so immediately obvious. But on the whole, That's good, disappearing into the bike, which is what I wanted. Nice and subtle, but as I say, I've used these before, I like them. Indicators are fitted. There's a small chance that I might end up moving them depending on how the rest of the construction on the rear of the bike goes. We'll have to see, but I won't move them unless I really have to. So. Thanks all very much for coming along on this part of the voyage with me and I will see you guys again soon.